In this video, we're going to take a look at the state of Microsoft Loop as it is today and some exciting announcements that Microsoft have sort of slipped in Admin Center that make it a bit of a game changer. If you're new to the channel, I'm Gavin Jones from MeTime. We help make people's lives easier happening to save them time using Microsoft 365. If you need help doing that, make sure you subscribe and hit the bell icon. We've got new videos coming out every week. If you need even more help, probably at an organizational level, maybe you're struggling with finding stuff, there's stuff everywhere, people using chats, channels, there's too many things, ah, WhatsApp's coming at you. That's what we help organizations do. So click one of the links in the description below or just go straight to book a call if you wanna find out how we can help and work together. But onto Microsoft Loop. So it was promised lots when it was announced. I was quite excited because I'd dabbled with Notion and Loop seemed to be Microsoft's version of Notion which has never fully materialized yet and difficult to recommend to clients given a couple of key things that weren't there. So let's just take a look at those first and then we'll come on to the announcements which might make it a little bit easier to recommend and easier to use. So when Loop first came out, it wasn't in Microsoft Teams channels at all. And if you've ever watched any of my other videos, I'm a massive big proponent of if you can get your team structure sorted first given that it's 2025 now if you've set stuff up in microsoft and you haven't led teams first then you probably overcomplicated things probably people don't know where to save things probably you end up with duplication you're probably overusing chat you might have more teams and more channels than people all of that leads to like well, where am i going to save it and that's just a bit of chaos so if you can get that simple get your team structure the smallest amount of teams you can get away with your channel structure the smallest amount of channels you can get away with and then follow into a discoverable folder structure with that as the start, that usually makes everything else easy or irrelevant. And like I say in the intro, if you want help sorting that out, we've got some free training that you can check out in the description below. But I'm a big believer in like cut everything else out internal collaboration wise and just go Teams channels because that's the simplest thing you can do. It's more modern than email you don't end up with losing things, all the benefits that I'll go through in that training. But so we need to use Teams channels and Microsoft always seems to favor not doing development in Teams channels. So when Loop first came out, it wasn't in Teams channels at all. Now it is, but it's not like fully integrated the way everything else is. So like Microsoft's usually got two paths, either like go down OneDrive sort of path where stuff you save it, it's in your little area, if you choose to share it out of there, that's up to you. Or you go down like a SharePoint Teamsy route and say, well, you're creating a group somewhere that's more open to the people that you allow into that group. But everyone's got the same permissions. Everyone can see everything. Everyone can edit everything unless you choose to remove those default permissions. That's how usually stuff in Microsoft works. Loop, when it came out, didn't work like that. It was completely standalone app. It was only in the web when you Loop workspaces came out. Loop components sort of lived only in Teams chats. You couldn't put them in channels. And it was just a, a bit disparate. So Loop was like components and pages and workspaces, but you couldn't do the workspaces or pages in Teams. You had to do, do that in the web, and that was only your personal one. And if you chose to share it, you had to invite everybody else. You couldn't add it to a group. And so now it's come into Teams channels a little bit in that you could add a loop component uh, here in a channel. Um, say we wanted a table and we that's all co-authorable once we post it and anybody in that channel can then go one see it and go and edit it live and we could copy and paste that component and stick it in Word or in Outlook or anywhere else we wanted to put it, apart from, you think most of the time you want something a bit more permanent in Teams, you would pin it as a tab. But if we go to add a tab at the time of recording, there is no tab for loop. So say we've got loads of stuff that we wanted to, to keep there, we can't actually go and see it from Teams. Maybe we wanna go and view our own um, things in the sidebar, well, we do have a loop sidebar app, but that just takes us into the web view. And again, everything's not really linked to a team or a Microsoft 365 group or SharePoint site. 
it's just sort of lives in the ether. And then Microsoft sort of made, well, you can have loop meeting notes as you do a meeting, but then they all sort of live disparately in the meeting. No one's really going to go back through into your chat and into meetings. You can have loads of them and then go into each one and then go to the tab and then go to loop just to see the meeting notes. So really you want to like, if you're having a meeting, you want it to be somewhere that it's saved, like they're using OneNote. So Microsoft used OneNote in Teams to collate notes and seemed weird that then when you set a channel up, it sets up a OneNote tab and you can put loop components in OneNote where the, the confu more confusion lies, but it's not a loop workspace. It's almost there. It's almost really useful. And again, it's like linked, sometimes linked into Planner. So you could add uh, a task list as a loop and post that. And that's all editable wherever it lives. And we can assign it to somebody. Um, and that's using Planner in the background. So if we give it an assignee and a due date and a task name, that's going to appear in someone's Planner in the sidebar in Assign to Me. And we can go and see that task in Planner. So wherever anything is assigned to you, it's not in a planner that you're already using. So it's this test loop paragraph one is that it's setting up a whole plan in the background just to manage that task component. So you can have lots and lots of little, little plans. Obviously you can see what's assigned to you, but you can't go back and see what's assigned to everybody else, which is what planner's good for. So if we went into our test and we had already had a planner tab up here, then we've already got a planner that's running in this team, in this channel. If we add a loop component, it's not actually going <laughs> to, to that plan. So it, it's all a bit disjointed. But the main thing is you can't add a loop workspace to a team and view it as a channel. So like the overlaps with OneNote, OneNote's kind of better because it's more integrated into teams and channels. The overlap with Planner, it's like with this creating loads of different plans, you can't see it into like one plan. And so it's all a bit disjointed. Come on to now Microsoft sort of, I've not seen a full announcement of what's coming, but there's like five different things that they sort of slipped into Admin Center that actually look quite exciting. So these all sort of flow together. So Microsoft Loop, new personal Loop workspace, promote members to owners in loop workspaces. This will come on to the next one. And the big one, Microsoft 365 groups for managing new workspaces require existing Microsoft 365 group for new loop workspaces and having a recycle bin for loop workspaces. So all the same things you would expect when you set up something like set up a shared OneNote in a team or set up a planner in a group all the, all the way that my, the rest of Microsoft 365 works is now coming to loop, which is really exciting. Main one being you, when you create a new loop workspace, you're going to need a Microsoft 365 group to, for that to live in. And it's going to take all the permissions of that group, just like when you set up a team, sets up a group and you can add a loop to a team and therefore add it to the group. So that's going to be really exciting because then presumably once that happens, you will be able to add a loop workspace as a tab in a Teams channel and see everything there. And then that's bringing everything together and you can create components and like share it in a Teams channel post or share it in somewhere else or however you want to bring everything to life for people to fill in. That's cool. Like that's really getting to the main benefits of Loop over like OneNote or Wiki as was. Uh, just being able to share specific bits that you want people to fill in. It's like forget all this Loop workspace, just fill in this task thing, or forget all of this, just do this paragraph and share that into a Teams chat. But if everyone wants to see the whole thing, that's going to be really useful. Not that Loop's not useful already, especially if you're a small organization in our Microsoft 365 Accelerator program. Last week, one of our members from Florida, Ryan, shared how he's already using Loop for one-to-ones and he tried loads of different things and Loop's now really working for him where 
you know, both him and his direct reports can fill in stuff as they're going into a loop page. And, you know, it's got a version history and stuff so they can see and go back to things, but everything's in that one space and give tasks out from there. As an organization grows, say from 20 to 200 people, the downsides of how Loop's currently working is like you've got one workspace that someone set up and you need to invite every single other person individually to go and see that workspace. That's not going to be very scalable. So this now being able to have a Microsoft 365 group for a Loop workspace is going to alleviate some of that and get fit in to our recommendations of leading teams first. If you're interested in joining the Microsoft 365 Accelerator group, then book a call to see if you're a good fit. We meet every Monday, Friday, and you get calls midweek if you need to, just to help you get the most out of Microsoft 365. If you're a small startup growing organization, say one to 10 people, if you're bigger than that, then book a call to see how I'm able to work together, what done for you and done with you programs to really help make your employees' lives easier as an organization. On to Loop, let me know if you're using Loop already. Let me know what you think of the new developments in the comments, love to know what you think in the comments. And if you've got any other questions on Loop, leave those in the comments below. Love to get your ideas on new videos. But thanks for watching so far, and we'll see you in the next one.